Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us again for our weekly chat. My name is Estefani. I'm one of the volunteers here at the Paul and Stephen Spiritus Center in Melbourne, Australia. And whether you're watching this live on Saturday evening or another time that is more suitable to you, please know that we really truly appreciate your presence and um, you joining us. Um, I, we like to start um, as always by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land that we um, are in, which are the Aboriginal people, and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and future. And another thing I like to do each time is to make sure we're sitting comfortably, that we have removed all the distractions to the best of our abilities from our environment and our minds and uh, so that we can focus on the topics being discussed and also most important of all we check our breath so if you feel comfortable with doing so please close your eyes take a deep breath in through your nose out through your mouth And as you breathe again, when you breathe in, you visualize the air coming in completely pure and healing. And as you breathe out, you imagine all your worries and all the impurities leaving your body through your breath. And as we breathe in one last time, we breathe in peace and calm and breathe out all the stress, all the tension, all the anxiety. And in this vibration of peace, calm, purity and healing that we've just infused our bodies with, we say the prayer that our guide, our mentor, our friend Jesus taught us when he was here among us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever so be it you may open your eyes back up so, even though the title of today's chat was published as Everything is Gonna Be Alright, which to me reminds me of a song and seems quite peppy, <laughs> the content um, of the chat today is based uh, on questions 1003 to 1009 of the Spirit's book, which is a section called Duration of Future Atonements. And it actually talks mostly about pain and suffering and when they're likely to end. Um, so I'd like to bring our chat's topic a little bit more in line with the Portuguese version of our weekly chat, and I will call it These Two Shall Pass, which I feel is a lot more appropriate, and I hope you will uh, understand and, and not switch off. <laughs> um, so, and I wanted to take a moment to talk about the Spirit's book, which is this book here, and I know it's in Portuguese. I have an English version somewhere, but the translation is so old, I can't really bear it. Um, I tend to use the Kardecpedia website. I know I've mentioned it before, um, but I truly find it fantastic. Um, you click on the language you want, you click on the book you want, the chapters are all there, you click, click, click where you need to go, easy peasy, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> and so, and a couple of uh, weeks ago, the Spirits book actually had a birthday or an anniversary, I guess I should say. And uh, it was the 18th of April of 1857. So 164 years ago, I believe. And uh, when the first edition of the Spirits book was published. And, um, and it was the first book of the five books that we always mention that we call the Pillars of the Spiritist Philosophy. Um, 
which are the Spirit's book, the Gospel according to Spiritism, the Medium's book, Genesis and Heaven and Hell. And uh, Alan Kardec, we call him the decoder. He was the one who organized all the information. He asked all the questions. The, uh, a group of uh, higher spirits helped him out through, with, with the help of some mediums. And um, Kardec was really good at, at asking questions. So we got really good information uh, and he organized everything. And that's what we use to this day. So the first edition of the Spirit's book had 500 something questions and then he realized that uh, we really needed a few more questions and especially answers I guess and the current um, version has 1019 questions so we are in questions 1003 to 1009 so almost in the end of it um, and I can't recommend enough uh, the reading of the Spirit's book it's really um, interesting because each question generates all the questions and it's, it's really easy to, to just keep reading it. Uh, but more so than reading, reading it, I recommend studying it. Uh, because every single answer is, has got an enormous amount of, um, teachings and, and enlightenment to, to be found within them. Um, if you, if you spend some time with it and pay attention, so if you just read it like a novel, you might get a few things, but not likely. Um, so we, yeah, so the, the Spirit's book is divided into four books and the, the, the questions and answers we're, we are basing our talk today on are in the book four called Hope and Consolation, chapter two, Future Joys and Sorrows. And as I mentioned, the section is called Duration of Future Atonements. And um, if, if you have an interest on studying the, the Spirit's book, our center from time to time opens up our study groups. But there is also another center in Melbourne uh, called the Spiritist Society of Melbourne. They do online um, study of uh, the Spirit's book. There's also a lot of courses uh, online that you can watch on YouTube, uh, both in Portuguese and English. Um, you know, where there's a will, there's a way, but it, it really is, um, there's a lot of uh, resources available out there and it's, it's really, there's a lot of knowledge contained in this book. So it's truly, uh, and, and if nothing else, you can incorporate it in your gospel at home discussions, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I can't recommend it enough. So, uh, and then if you joined us a couple of weeks ago in the last chat, um, that I did, uh, there was one last week with the beautiful Helen, um, but the, it was called the need for reincarnation. And if you didn't watch it, it's still there, saved for you in the videos area of our Facebook page, but you would have heard me say that reincarnation is the main tool that we have in our process of evolution, right? It is the opportunity given to us to learn, to improve and to atone for our wrongdoings. And we get this chance again and again because God is good and just and loving and God loves every single one of us and wants us to improve. Um, and that with our free will, we choose our own paths. And some of these paths are winding, some are straight, but our destination is the same. All of us are heading to true happiness. Um, the religious books often uh, refer it as, uh, to it as the kingdom of heaven and, and things like that. But we are all, um, you know, uh, heading towards evolution, towards true happiness, um, towards uh, the, the, the fullness uh, of our being, you know, when, when we let go of all our imperfections and, and all of our hangups and we are just, um, you know, who we are, we become who we're truly meant to be. And, uh, it takes each one of us different lengths of time to get there because we all have different experiences and these experiences are based on our own behaviors. So I mentioned last time that our present is a consequence of our past and at the same time is the building blocks for our future right so i'm not going to repeat the whole <laughs> the whole chat but it is it is important as a as a 
starting point for the topic today because one of the questions that is asked in, in, in this, and I won't be able to go through all of them. I actually wanted to, but then when I tried, um, the chat became incredibly long. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so one of the questions that is asked is how long must we suffer before we atone for what we have done, right? And um, there is an expression in English um, that says, how long is a piece of string? And basically that means that it is an impossible answer because it will vary each time depending on the purpose, on the availability, on who cuts the string or any other number of variables. And it's the same when you ask about how long do we have to suffer? Um, you know, it will depend on a huge number of things. But before we actually go into any of those things, I really like us to understand something really, really clearly, right? If I had enough knowledge to put a PowerPoint behind me and I would put that out there in big bold letters, atonement does not mean punishment. It's They are not the same thing. If you look in the dictionary, Atonement means making amends for a wrong or injury. In the Spirit's book, Paul the Apostle, who is one of the namesakes of our Spiritist Center, tells us that the sole purpose of atonement is rehabilitation and emancipation, and to assume it lasts forever would be to deny its reason for existing. existing. So atonement is only there for as long as we need it, right? No longer. Once, once everything is sorted, once um, things are mended, uh, you don't need it anymore. And in fact, suffering doesn't even have to be part of it. It just happens that way because, um, you know, that's, that's how we roll most of the time. And I'll touch on it a little bit further, but, that, but like we've talked many times um, how we can solve things through love and through pain. And, um, and, and unfortunately, we don't always choose love, amazingly, <laughs> uh, when we could be doing things in a much more gentle way. Uh, many times we, we end up um, choosing pain and a lot of you might object to the choosing part of it but when it, it's a bit like and I think I mentioned this if not the last time the one before that when we don't do anything that's also our choice right so uh, sometimes we might not be choosing uh, consciously the path that will be the more painful one but we also didn't choose the path that would be the more loving one the more gentle one the one that you know would have been um uh, the better alternative so if we don't choose this one we end up in that one is it, it just that is what happens so paul um tells us that punishment is a natural consequence of a false movement it's the amount of pain necessary for the soul to dislike something enough to decide to do something about it using the affliction to return to the right path Remember the paths? So, oops, we got, we got in the wrong path. If nothing happens, we don't realize we are in the wrong path. So something happens to bring us back to the right one, right? Um, so, and, and continuing with Paul, he says, it is the gradual decrease of imperfections It is the gradual decrease of imperfections and atonements through successive lives that will lead you to reach divine union by reconciling your reason with your feelings. And so does that make sense that we are, you know, that we are just going through our multiple lives at chipping each time. You know, each time we improve a little bit, some of us improve a lot. It really depends on the person. It depends on how conscious you are of things and how, um, how you learn, how you apply the things that you learn, how much attention you pay. You know, it's a bit like, you know, when you look at 
some children are incredibly precocious and they look like little adults. And then you look at some adults and, and they behave like children. They're completely immature. So each person will, um, you know, through our free will, we'll choose our own path and we'll get there when we get there, right? But it's through those successive lives and through all the, you know, like, um, I, I was a bit, I, I thought I had written something wrong in my notes before, but decrease of imperfection. So as we improve ourselves and we atone for, for any wrongs that we've done, that's when we, you know, we, we uh, reach our evolution. So if, if we, and I, and I feel that it is so important for us to distinguish atonement from punishment because so many times, um, uh, we don't quite understand the law of um, action and reaction or, or um, you know, what a lot of people call karma. And um, so if I gave a really simple example, right, um, and forgive me if it's too simple, but I like to bring it down to if, if we can understand what happens in our everyday life, perhaps we can extrapolate it to, um, you know, higher meanings. But let's say you know, we're walking down the street, we didn't notice something on the ground, we stumble and we fall, right? I don't know about you guys, but that certainly happened to me not that long ago. <laughs> so we bruise, we bleed, um, we sometimes break bones. And tell me something, is, is that a punishment because we weren't paying attention? Or is that a consequence of our flesh hitting the hard cement? Right? I don't think, then maybe that's just me, that you know, you get punished for falling down or for stumbling. But all the same, <laughs> there are always consequences to every action. So, you know, like it does hurt. And what happens after we suffer those bruises and all that bleeding and those broken bones? If we're walking by that same place the next time, do you think we are more careful? Do you think we are a bit more present, <laughs> right? Because the moment we come close already, we remember. We remember the pain. We remember the discomfort. We remember how it impacted our lives and we pay more attention. So, uh, you know, and I, you know, that, and that is, that is what happens, you know, because I, uh, that is what happens with other things as well. That unfortunately we need to start to, to go through it in our flesh to really realize, um, you know, to, that it's like Paul was saying that pain is, is sometimes what drives us to actually, um, do the right thing or behave the right way. Because I'm pretty sure that at some point in all of our lives, either our mother or father or teacher or anyone in our lives would have told us you have to pay attention when you walk. <laughs> we could have learned the lesson that way. But most often is after we fall, after we walk into something, after we hit and hurt ourselves that we are actually assimilating, oh yeah, really I should pay attention, right? Um, and it is the same in our lives, you know? Um, so we're not, we're not being necessarily punished. God is not like that. God um, never imposes uh, horrible sufferings on us. Um, it's, it's when we, it, it's always about our behavior and it's most often when we ignore the opportunities that have been given to us to atone for things and, and we don't notice or we, we think it's too hard. And then we wait the next time it comes around, it comes out a little bit more difficult and a bit more intense. And then, you know, things just escalate. Um, so the, 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 the earlier we catch on, the less likely we'll have to deal with suffering. It is not a punishment. It is always a consequence of our actions, whether they, these actions were in the present or whether they're in the past. So sometimes we think, oh, but I didn't do anything to deserve this. Well, we don't know that because we don't always remember what we have done or what we haven't done. So the only exceptions to this are sometimes when we come uh when we signed up volunteer to some trials or missions so then we we accepted going through certain situations either to help someone else or to make sure that we've really learned um, our lessons 
from from previous mistakes. But other than that, um, it is always a consequence of our actions, right? It is not a God, a God uh, punishing us or, um, you know, putting us through uh, terrible suffering just for the sake of it. It is just part of um, the way we learn, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. And um, and in I, I often like to quote um, Oprah when she talks about uh, God's whispers, because it is so vitally important that we pay attention to what is going on in our lives and what are the situations we've been put on and the, and, and the people that we are, they are around us. So she always says, she says, she, she said it many times, I've heard her say it many times, but she says, what I know is God is love, love and God is life. And your life is always speaking to you. First, in whispers. It's subtle, those whispers. But if you don't pay attention to the whispers, they get louder and they get louder. And if you don't pay attention to that, then one day you get a brick upside your head. And if you don't pay attention to that, the whole brick wall falls down. So it really, truly uh, behooves us to listen to those whispers, right? Uh, at the, as early as possible. Matthew um it tells us in the gospel to watch and pray and we really do need to pay attention so that we don't let those loving opportunities pass us by and we end up having to to deal with the with the brick on the head or with the the whole brick wall falling uh, down on us because so many times that's the only time we really wake up or we are really forced to look at something when we've had many, many, many opportunities along the way to deal with situations, right? So, so you know, we need to have a look around us. We need to have a look at the people in our families. We need to have a look at our workplaces, at the issues that we have with our health or with our lives or with our careers, our relationships. Are there any lessons we can learn there? Are there any mistakes that we seem to make more than once or sometimes more than twice or regularly? Goodness, <laughs> sometimes we say, have you ever caught yourself saying, oh, I always do that. I always get this wrong. I always, is there anything we can do differently? Can we act differently? Can we feel differently? Right? It is extremely important because these are those opportunities, right? So, so, so many times, you know, we might be put into a family and we could be atoning for um, things we've done to these people by loving them, right? By loving them as, as, as a child, as a parent, as a partner, as a sibling. And we spend our whole lives fighting and creating uh, trouble with those people and then we miss opportunities so next time we come back as enemies and we still still need to forgive and love and do all of that now it's a lot harder though because before we came in a situation that was primed for us to to manage it in a in in, in a nicer way uh, so let's take those opportunities you know like we really need to and and um uh, you know, staying with Oprah, she has another quote that I find incredibly profound, and I hope you do too. She says, I know I've never been alone, and you haven't either. And I know that the presence, that flow, some people call it grace, is working in my life at every single turn, and in yours too, if you let it in. It is closer than your breath, and it is yours for the asking. I have felt the presence of God my whole life, even when I didn't have a name for it. I could feel the voice bigger than myself speaking to me, and all of us have that same voice. Be still and know it. You can acknowledge it or not. You can worship it or not. You can praise it. You can ignore it. Or you can know it. Know it. It's always there speaking to you 
and waiting for you to hear it in every move, in every decision. I wait and I listen. I'm still. I wait and listen for the guidance that's greater than my meager mind. Amazing. I think it's amazing. Um, so another thing that I find amazing is that, you know, <laughs> it's how quickly time goes. So, but anyway, for our, our final prayer, I would like to do it slightly differently today because if you're watching us um, today, tomorrow is Mother's Day. <laughs> so I like to dedicate it to all the mothers. So, but anyway, we'll do our usual thing for our final prayer. So if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes again and sit comfortably. We check our breath again, deeply in and out. Letting all the tension go and imagining a beautiful white light surrounding you, producing feelings of warmth, of peace, of love. And once you are completely filled with these feelings, we emanate these vibrations to the whole world because many, many, many people are in really great need of light right now. And as I mentioned, I like to dedicate our final prayer to all the mothers in honor of their day tomorrow, but really in honor of every day they dedicate to us their children. And especially on those days when we don't quite deserve them, but we get them anyway. The following is, a, is an adaptation of a prayer by Daniel Darling called a Mother's Day Prayer. And to be very honest with you, I don't know who Daniel Darling is, but I honor his words and I hope you appreciate them as well because I found them to be very beautiful and touching. Dear Father, we approach you on behalf of all the mothers. We thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self each mom, mom gives to their children, for the late nights spent rocking a colicky infant, for the hands callousing from washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, baking, baking, hugging, disciplining. We thank you for the gift of time moms give to their kids, whether it's stay at home moms, working moms, or moms with some combination of the two. We thank you for the flexibility of moms, for their tirelessness, for their perseverance and their devotion. We pray you give each mom strength to help her see in every mundane task the eternal cosmic significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical world-changing events may be happening anonymously in her home. And please help her to forgive those who undermine her significance. We pray for the single moms and thank you for the arms that surround children who may never know their earthly father. We pray for the mothers who have never had the honor of bearing children, but whose nurturing extends to the many poor and needy who cross the threshold of their lives. We ask you to be their daily, the daily bread of tired mothers. We ask you to be their living water. We ask you to be their source of spiritual and physical strength. We pray that the same grace that flowed from Father to Son to us in salvation will flow from mothers to their children. And we pray that each mother rejects perfectionism and instead embraces the goodness of the gospel. We pray the rhythms of love and forgiveness shape every home. Lord. Give each mother a worshipful reverence of you, the creator and sustainer of life. And help each mother to rest in the knowledge that they are but stewards of your children and that only your spirit can produce change in the hearts of each child. May each mother find rest in you. And most of all, Lord, may we love and cherish the special women who have born us, who have nurtured us and who have prayed for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you who formed and needed each one of us in a mother's womb. So be it. 
You may open your eyes back up if you haven't done so already. I'd like to thank you again for sharing this moment with us. And before we go, I just wanted to give a quick reminder that our center is trying to help as many people as we can in these uh, trying, most trying of times. And we'd like to ask you to uh, join us in helping people both in Brazil and in Australia material, materially as well as in prayers. I know the suffering is spreading to many, many countries. We um, we we are only small, so we feel that if we focus on certain places, then our help might be more helpful. Um, and the details of the charities we support and how to contribute are in all our points of contact. So in Facebook, in Instagram, website, in person, yes, our center is open and you are most welcome to go there in person each Saturday afternoon for activities in Portuguese or simply reach out to any of us volunteers. Um, and I'd like to wish you every happiness and health in every single day of your life. And as the beautiful Sanskrit mantra says, may all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Take care. Much love.